Thank you, Lydia. Um, good afternoon to everybody. Um, so uh, I would like to describe a very recent package that Tractography, which was released uh, this weekend. Uh, and so, uh, <laughs> but we worked on it for, for a while. So it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's time to present it. Um, basically you can add, well, you would have been able to add it, uh, like add Tractography, but there's a, a registry hiccup. So uh, the registry lags uh, behind a little bit. So now you cannot install it as easily. There's documentation. It runs the package run on CPU on GPU thanks to kernel abstraction. Uh, and there is um, plotting based on uh, Makey, uh, Makey.gm. And so more than just performing tractography, it's a way to uh, play with the mathematics of, uh, of tractography. Okay, so we're going to have a look into this. Uh, so I need to recall a little bit of biology, then I will describe the algorithms, speak a bit about the implementation, and conclude. So biology, uh, what is a tractography for? First, what is white matter? So if you take a section of your brain, you see it here, uh, there's white part. Okay, so the white part was uh, put in white in, on purpose. And you have this gray area, which is where the, the, the cell body are located. And the white part are basically the fibers, the axons that connect the different parts of the brain. So for example, you have this callosum, which connect this part of the brain to this other part of the brain. Okay, and you have this U fibers that connect different, let's say, local part of the cortex together uh, with using, uh, with using these uh, yellow connections. And so if you take uh, uh, an MRI scan, an, an MRI, sorry, of a real subject, you will see that the gray matter, uh, the white matter is actually grayish here. And superimposed, we have put some reconstruction of the fibers that you can see uh, in your brain. Okay. So this is obviously a, draw a drawing, and this is the result of tractography using standard software. Um, so the MRI does not give you just a single uh, uh, scala per voxel. Uh, diffusion MRI gives you access to the uh, local orientation of the fiber uh, of the fibers inside the voxel. So it gives you a, a probability distribution. So uh, on this little picture, you can see that uh, you can see this field of uh, orientation distribution function. I will call them ODF. And so you can see that I have this uh, field of ODF at a crossing and use uh, zoom one is an example of an ODF. So you will see that you have uh, a distributed uh, alignment like that, let's say uh, a diagonally and the other crossing at 95 uh, 90 degrees like that. Okay. And so from this field of FODF, we would like to reconstruct uh, basically the streamlines or the fibers, uh, the, 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 the white matter fibers. So in this case, it's problematic. It's not easy to do because the crossing could be uh, could yield two results. Uh, one would be like the red one, or you have a cross, uh, no crossing basically, or you could have a crossing. Okay. So the goal of this package is to compute the, the, the white matter uh, fiber bundles uh, on the GPU and uh, on the CPU as well. Uh, why is it important? Because it's very important. It's very important to know how uh, which part of the cortex are connected uh, to each other. So here, for example, you will see that the red part, the reddish part is connected to the blue and you have the, the tracks in between. And it's very important to know uh, how brain communicates, okay, basically. And this mapping is done through uh, tractography. And as I said, well, the, the literature to compute this structural connectivity that, for example, surgeon use, um, recommends to compute uh, 20 million streamlines. So you have one line here is a streamline. And so the typical... Uh, Recommendation from 2025, a nature communication paper is 20 million fibers. And for example, on uh, state of the arts uh, software, it's 20 minutes. Okay, what are the algorithms? There are two main algorithms which are very easy to understand. The first one is you um, uh, parameterize a streamline using the position X 
and the direction of the streamline, the tangent, if you wish, okay, on the sphere. So what you do is basically you propagate along the tangent, so that's the first equation, an Euler's cap, and then you choose the tangent that is the most probable, okay? So you take the arc max of the probability distribution, the FODF. So in this case, you will see on this little drawing, you have this probability distribution. I take the, the lob here, so I go into that direction, then I select this lob, and I go forward like that, okay? Very straightforward. And... Uh, if you decrease delta S, it's not uh, completely easy that, I mean, you can get uh, completely different results. It's very hard to, to tune. You can do the same, but probabilistically. And so you will sample, <coughs> let's say, inside the, the ODF. Uh, you, you will sample the ODF at each voxel, and you will restrict to a certain sector, let's say, a, a, a given cone. And so the conditional probability, you can write it easily, where C is basically a distance between two directions on a sphere. And uh, I mean, that's it pretty much. Huh? And uh, then it looks like the, the deterministic algorithm. So the implementation, ah, it's not, I mean, it should be easy. It's technical, basically because fMRI data is provided by uh, basically the, the, provides the FODF on the spherical harmonic basis, okay? So you have to compute to evaluate the, the probability distribution. You have to add voxel X you have to compute this sum, okay? And then you have to sample from it, and what we do is we use the inverse transfer sampling uh, based on the pre-computation of the ODF on the sphere. Okay, that's it. So, I mean, it, it, it requires some memory, uh, the number of voxel times the sampling uh, uh, number, and then we compute uh, N Monte Carlo initial condition, and we sample from this Markov chain, and we plot it, and that's the result. Here is a result that you can see. Uh, so if this is very dangerous to do, but let's try it. So for example, here I will uh, just open um, data from an MRI, fMRI. You can see like these are the number of voxel X, Y, Z, and this is the number of uh, vector in the basis uh, of the spherical harmonics. Uh, you can compute, then you compute the initial conditions that, that are on the cortex. You propagate them. So on the, here on the CPU, it's uh, uh, 100,000 in half a second. And then you can plot, uh, oops, hopefully it works. Yeah, that's a picture that we had before. Okay. And we can add uh, the field of uh, ODF, which is uh, seen here. Uh, you can see that the field of ODF, and if you had time, you would see that the streamlines are aligned more or less with this. Okay. Uh, I will stop now in order to have some questions. So what are the conclusions? Well, uh, I mean, it works relatively straight, uh, straightforwardly because we have already available packages to read fMRI data, so nifty.gl and also fibers.gl. Um, this package was, the starting point was to study the mathematics. So when you change the parameter, you obtain very different results and we wanted to understand why. Uh, GPU is not fully used because if you reach some parts, basically there are some symmetry for the march of chain and uh, some thread will stop working and wait for the other to, to, um, to finish. But still, we uh, end up with uh, 2 million streamlines per second which uh, allowed us to compute like 500 billion streamlines to, to have statistics. It's not working on a Mac uh, for two reasons. Uh, one was solved by uh, actually uh, uh, Julia, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, community, uh, which was that Metal did not accept very big uh, array. Uh, and the second one is uh, we cannot draw a random number in a kernel for now. Otherwise, it would run on this, uh, on this laptop. And um, yeah, have a look at the, uh, uh, at the, at the code that help us to improve the GPU, the plotting also, which is done basically on, a, on the CPU and transferred to, a, to Maki. It will help a lot to have this working directly on the GPU. And with this, I uh, will uh, thank you for your attention. So do you have a question, Some, someone? Uh, I have one, but it just, you know, that you have a constraint, u equals j of x, and I was wondering if you can relax this constraint 
and having this like in a cost, uh, you have uh, some uh, penalization and, yes. and do some optimal control somewhere. Exactly. Uh, well, we have this ID, but we still need to find a way to uh, basically to, to move the, the streamlines. So what will be the equation under which you uh, try to satisfy the constraint, the constraint while well, minimize the cost? Mm. But uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's a project that we have. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.